Hi, I'm Rosh from Energy Matters. Welcome to our podcast, Road to Zero, where we dive headfirst into all things renewable. Join us as we chat with industry experts, tech specialists, and some of your favorite TV and radio personalities, asking the renewable energy questions that you want answered to. Our goal, a zero carbon future. Uh, today, I am absolutely delighted to be joined by Jess from Norman Jess Fain, fan favourites of the block in 2018 and contestants in season one of Renovate or Rebuild. Hello, Jess. Hey, Rosh. And now I feel like I'm in the Brady Bunch. There's a story. <laughs> Which way are you? Are you this way? I'm, this I'm is... all over the place at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a nice check background today. And my background <laughs> seems to change every episode. No, it's gorgeous. It's very classy. Well, thank you. This is what a classy background for a classy lady. And... Uh, <laughs> Both a TV and radio star. <laughs> You're very easily pleased, Dal. You're very easily <laughs> pleased. <laughs> well, look, Jess, you know, a bit of background on yourself. I mean, obviously you are, as I said, both a TV and radio star. I mean, the you, you were on the block. Did you have any other two TV appearances before the block? Or was that your first gig? I guess it, it depends what you call TV appearances. I used to play lawn bowls for Australia. So I used wow. to be on the um yeah, I used to be on the telly rolling them down with some of the oldies back in the day before. I mean, I don't know if it's cool now, but before when before it was cool, like even young people played it. I was a uh, I was a very lonely teenager. It's very hard to make out with people on the ball screen back in <laughs> 2000 and 2003. <laughs> oh my god. What level did you get to? Was it like an Olympic sport or um, I played for Australia and I was a couple of times Australian and state champions and oh my god, I just thought you were just um sipping a VB then. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit it's a bit early. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um and um and so I used to play lawn bowls and then I missed out on the 2006 Commonwealth Games. Oh. So that's when I decided to um retire from lawn bowls at the age of 21. And um, and then I moved on to a, a media, so I, I had a crack at media. What was your first gig in media? Was that straight to radio? So I um, I applied for Australian Radio School, AFTERS, Australian Film, Television and Radio School, and that's your general path. Anyway, I yeah. didn't get in. They rejected me. So I found a bloke um, that was doing a radio school in his back garage um, now I look back on it, it was quite pervy. However, he was cheap and I got a demo <laughs> and I um, applied for a job in Musselbrook, which is yep. regional New South Wales, and they wouldn't give me a job on air, so they let me sell advertising for them. And I would just oh. stay back every single night for between six and eight months and every morning the boss would get, get into work and he'd have a CD of my demo on his desk for eight months until he finally gave me a job. That's incredible. Well done, mate. Perseverance always pays off. Well, you know, in the, you get told no a lot of times, but, I mean, yeah. in my opinion, no one has the right to tell you whether or not you can do something. So if someone says no, you just think, oh, well, you silly old bugger. I'll show you. I'll show you different. And so you just don't give up until you get what you want. Mate, good on you. And that's incredibly inspiring. And that's essentially, like, you know, a lot of people get rejected all the time. I don't end up actually doing, you know, doing what they love. You know, they do well, what they, they have to do, but they don't end up doing what their passion is. Yeah, and, and I think because on the inside we get we tell ourselves that we can't do something, and so we, when someone says no, you can't, you're almost relieved because your inner narrative matches your outer narrative. But if you just think, oh well, I mean, people get things wrong all the time, lottery numbers you know, opinions on things. So why does anyone have the right to tell you that you can't achieve something? Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. And what at that point, I mean, you know, you've, you've been very successful on radio. Um, were, were you at your sort of peak on radio before the block or was it sort of the block that kind of helped be, was that the catalyst? I did radio for 15 years before I got on the block. Okay, um, so it really was about radio. <laughs> <laughs> the, that's that's the, funny, that's <laughs> the funny thing about it. When I got Sydney, there was all these social comments going, oh, another bloody reality TV contestant got a job on radio. And I was like, no, you bloody idiots. I've been on radio for 15 years. Um, definitely the profile of the block helped get the, the job on Sydney. Um yeah. 
and and let's just normal people are gonna like i i you you have your skills for 15 years but then if you all of a sudden you know a few more people know you then then uh, even the bosses of bigger radio stations know you i think yeah. that i probably you know eventually i would have maybe got onto a bigger radio station without it but i mean if you can fast track what's going on that's not the reason why we went on the block um after being in radio for 15 years, we went onto the block and I was like, oh, I'm a bit sick of waking up early in the morning. Um, so I was just going to start a cleaning company. And then the day that I bought all the shirts, um, I the, the, it's funny how the universe works because we applied for the block the year before, we didn't get on. Then um, And then the casting producer said, oh, would you like to have another Zoom and another crack at the block? And we said, yeah, of course we would. That would be wonderful. But it was the same week that the cleaning shirts had rocked up. Best Clean Australia. Still haven't thrown out the shirts just as a backup. And, yeah. um, <laughs> and, and so we went and had this Zoom call and it wasn't even the producer. It was Scotty Cam on the other end of the screen saying no he made it. Like it was, it was a, a random day. That's fantastic. That's absolutely amazing. And what made you, what had you wanted to go on the block? I mean, having done it for 15 years, you know, what, why did you choose it? The block was for us um, a chance at financial uh, freedom. Yeah. Uh, you saw that the, the money that they won on there. So my yeah. end goal was really to, because um, we'd had a couple of kids and we had some credit cards and a couple of cars and you could just foresee your future continually just chasing your ass. So yeah. I said to Norm, why don't we have a crack at this? If we can pay off our credit cards and our cars, like we're cheering. Um, and we don't necessarily have to have anything after that. But if for some, we didn't think for a second that we would get on because I still, there's nothing special about us. There's a million of us in Australia. So I just thought, oh, well, if somehow we fluke this, um, we'll, um, we might be able to get ahead. And so I, and I desperately wanted another baby in which we tried for for years. Um, and unfortunately it didn't eventuate, but yeah. it, it just gave us a chance that just gave us a chance at freedom, you know? And good on you for getting on them. I mean, the, the reality was, I mean, we, we love the blocks. My wife and I, you know, we, we, we're avid watchers of the block and, uh, and you guys lit up the screen, you know, and you really have got, I mean, you say, you know, you're just one of many, but the fact is to actually go on the block and then just be true to yourself and true to your personality. And I think that's one of, probably one of the key things I've noticed with doing the stuff we've been doing recently with filming, um, you know, Renovate, Rebuild and, and now Open Homes and whatnot. I mean, you guys in real life are exactly what you are like in a block, you know, just maybe <laughs> maybe push to an extreme level as well. <laughs> You know, you've maybe a few more block. coloured languages, you know, every now and again. <laughs> a lot of very colourful languages going on there. But it was, what was it like? I mean, you know, obviously you've got the experience of doing media for 15 years beforehand, and then you're thrust into this real, you know, hot box of, of renovation where you've got a, a limited period of time, you're away from your family, and you've got to pull off a miracle. You know, what was that experience like for you? Horrendous. No, it was all right. Um, <laughs> That was good. I mean, for me, we were, it was never about extending your career. You know, it was, it, it worked out that way, but I got, um, so I was offered a few jobs after the block that was a higher yes. up position. I said, no, 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 no. And, you know, so for us, we were, I mean, it's really, if, 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 if you don't give a shit, <laughs> then it's easy to be yourself. If you don't complicate your world, it's easy to be yourself. And you think, ah, oh, well, and you get to an age where you think, ah, oh, well, if you like me or not, it happens. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Like, how, how was Norm's experience? Because Norm's gone back into uh, back to construction now, hasn't he, since the block? I mean, has he? Did he enjoy the whole experience? And has he? I mean, have has, have both of you found now another level? of i suppose like i use the word fame but i know that you're probably like fame but have you guys both found another level since the block i mean the normans inside of doing construction you inside of doing radio it was really nice for us as a relationship when you have children everything's about the kids or about you know and you sort of forget if you're either or not a, you're a good team or not so that's why like he i reckon heaps of couples secretly break up on the block and then get back together because yeah. 
you, you're not used to working as a team. So it got us a lot closer together because we had to communicate and work as a team and go through tantrums and we got to know each other. So it probably accelerated the, the relationship by about 10 years. Um, yeah. That and when we're in the showers, like we'd have a shower in the morning. So you'd work all night on a, like on a Saturday night for a Sunday morning reveal because it's all real. And then you hadn't slept for 24 hours and then you'd both shower at the same time because you've got double shower heads because you're real flash because you're in an apartment. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and, the, and, and the judges are about to get in. And like most Sunday mornings, Norm would hit me up for like a shag in the shower. <laughs> and I'd be like, are you joking? Like, I'm exhausted. <laughs> and also, like, I've been painting, my hands are tired. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, so, like, I couldn't think of anything worse. So I just think at the end of the week, if you can still give yourself, <laughs> if you're still hot for your partner after the block, you're going all right. I'm going to have to, uh, this episode should have gone on after dark. It should have been one with <laughs> a glass of wine at 11, 11 p.m. <laughs> but it's also good for the environment because if you share a shower, you know, energy matters. Save water, people. Save water. <laughs> save water. Save your marriage and water and the environment. The three saves. Oh, I love it. And since since then, so there's been some a few other TV things going on. I mean, you great, you're great on radio. You're amazing on radio. You're great on TV. I mean, would you like to do more stuff in television? Um, I mean, if they'll have me, I you know, I wouldn't say no to a job. I went for years trying to get a job. So now, if someone wants to offer me one, I'd never say no. Um, I just no. I just enjoy it. That and I've got no other skills really. I used to pick tomatoes, and I was about to start a cleaning business, and you know, which I I would look for. So. I um I just reckon we got we got hauled ass first into this world of media and we're having yeah. a real good time having fun with it. And I'm signed for two more years and after two years it might all be over. So why would you say why wouldn't you say that yes to everything while the ride's still going? Because it can end tomorrow. Absolutely. Well we'll play a short clip in a second just from Renovator Rebuild, which was absolutely awesome and you were great in it. Before I do, I just want to ask you, I mean what three things do you want Australia to know about you now? I mean, as to who you are, what you are, you know, what what you look, what you stand for. What three things would you, you know, say? Jess is Jess. Um, sexy. Um, like probably like the desire of a lot of men around the country. <laughs> no, just joking. <laughs> Why is that funny, Rosh? <laughs> I was just thinking about my scheduling. I've definitely got it all wrong. <laughs> No, we should have um, had a, a pre-interview before this interview, just as I say. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I mean, but for us, uh, we've got our, our family. So, you know, yeah. the kids, family, and, you know, just surrounding yourself with rippers. Yeah. You know, whatever happens out there, if you've got a base and you've got great people around you, then whatever that that no matter what's going on in your life that's what we stood for before the block that's what we still stand for now nothing's really changed we just live no. in a different house absolutely oh right, that's brilliant, mate well i'm gonna do now is put on a very quick clip um for renovate a rebuild so everybody can see what the fuss was about and why you guys were such a hit give me one oh. second right on so we've checked out this house we've worked out where our north aspect is mm -hmm. I'm tipping this house during the winter time would get freezing. I reckon yeah. the insulation side of it would be absolutely terrible. Well, we've done everything we can to, to talk about the orientation of the house. Yeah. But let's start talking about energy. How we? Can. I reckon. Should we pull up? Let's have a look at the energy bills and yeah. see when they're using them. Look. My God. So in winter, they are using kilowatts, thirty-two plus. They're using it's over huge. double their energy rating. So that's more than the average person. And it's because of these windows. Yeah, well, it's just the whole house. So they'll be paying a fortune. Well, right. No, we need to work out solar panels. We need to work out how yeah. many solar panels we can get on this joint. There's this really good website, right? So what you do is you put in your postcode and you put in your average daily energy consumption. So what was that? 34 kilowatt hours. Is that a lot? Yep. Yeah, that's a lot, isn't it? And then what you do is you 
tip calculate, it automatically gives you the recommended system size. 10 kilowatt. Yeah. Estimated savings, monthly 293 bucks and yearly $3,570 with the recommended battery size of 21 kilowatts. That's unreal. I know. So that it tells you exactly the size that you want. What's the size? 10 kilowatt. 10 kilowatt. It tells you how much money you're going to save weekly and monthly, and then how much size you need for it. Click quote down yeah. the bottom. We need to get a quote sure. on this. That's great. Beauty. Good living. I know. That was amazing. I mean, that, that actually was an Oscar winning performance, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> it is how good's living. You didn't save a couple of bucks by you know going onto the Energy Matters website. I'm I mean, sorry. It's a brainer, really, isn't it? <laughs> Shamelessly spruiking the brand all the way through. But mate, you did so you did so well. Look at and that just once again just shows uh, in that particular show. I mean, you know, you guys are fantastic. I mean, that's a fairly serious part because you know you are there to obviously you know sort of um, promote the technology and and you know the zero carbon part and people obviously making a bit of a difference which was awesome what else did you what did you love about the show the most i mean having done renovate and rebuild i mean what you know what did you love about it well first of all with the promotion of you know the promotion with energy matters before we go into any show we get a list Lorm and i get a list of the sponsors or you know people that are in, companies that are involved with the show and we yeah. research you guys so when we talk about that stuff like it's not just a like a like a plug you know, because you're on the show, like, like we genuinely think what you guys are doing is incredible. So oh, thank you. I just wanted to, I, I just wanted to make that really clear because um, I, 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 in this world of commercialism, sometimes, you know, they're like, oh, okay, that's great. Good on you. How much did you get paid for that? You know? And, and you're like, no, not at all. So I, I just, we are really passionate about the brands that we work with, especially with Renovate or Rebuild. And um, I just wanted to congratulate you on everything you, you did. Thank you so much. That means um, a lot. Thank you. What was the question again? Um, what else did you like about the show other than promoting Energy Matters? <laughs> <laughs> um, what I loved about the show is that there's this perception that if you want to help the environment, A, it costs you a fortune. You know, yeah. so there's always a cost with doing the right thing. And I guess that people associate that cost with things like if you want to buy free range eggs, it costs more. If you want to buy organic, it costs more. And so we've got this like deep ingrained psychological, you know, opinion that if we want to do the right thing, it's expensive. So yeah. what I enjoyed about this show is that it shows you how it actually saves you money to do the right thing and to and to save the, the planet. You know, sometimes there is an upfront cost, but eventually you're actually, uh, you're, you're better off. So I, I enjoyed learning about that as well, as, as well as delivering that. And then even when we're up the street, you know, someone that's watched the show, you're able to pass on the knowledge that you've learned from the show. And it just, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a show with meaning and feeling. Absolutely. It was. And it was so well put together as well. I mean, I was, I was actually blown away. I mean, yes, you know, when we got when we heard about it and there was an opportunity to be one of the uh, sponsors on the show, of course, we jumped at it. We promote a zero carbon future. And that's really important to us. And we just saw the show as medium to get that message out there. But then participating and being part of it. I mean, we're blown away just not by, you know, you know all the different partners. I mean, I, of course, I'm a renewable energy, but I didn't I wasn't aware someone who has yet to renovate or rebuild a property or even own their own home that they live in. We still rent, we're gonna build next year. You know, it's incredible to see how much technology is available um, outside of just renewable energy and um, and the impact it can have on your energy rating. It was absolutely fascinating. Was that real, like things like, even um, if you take a 15 minute shower, cost you a dollar. Yeah, if yeah. you go, if you, um, if, so I think it's like, 50, if you toast 50 loaves of bread, or 50 pieces of bread, you know, if you toast, it's a dollar. Like everything's really expensive. So in order to convert that to renewable energy and also to get a better rate on that, everything that everything's so expensive. And then for some reason, us as humanity, we, we get our electricity bills and we're constantly surprised. Yeah. And, so, and so to be able to do that in a positive way is, is an honour, really. Absolutely, nice point. So, Jess, getting quickly, I'm um, getting back to your career very quickly. So, what challenges are you facing right now in your career? I mean, obviously, you think you know you've been on this roller coaster of a ride for the last you know few years. 
Um, where are you at right now? What's going on? Um, I guess. Um, I mean, the cha the challenges are we've got a. It, it depends. I feel like challenges and opportunities are very two similar yes. words because yeah. we have a, a new show on Triple M that we're working on for next year. Awesome. Um, and we were, uh, and so it's delivering that new product to Sydney, which yeah. is an opportunity, but it's also a challenge because you want to do it well. Um, you know, I've been doing a little bit of work with Studio Ten lately, um, and uh, yeah, and. Um, I just adore it. And, you know, it, it's the challenge is trying to deliver. <laughs> you know, you, yeah. you you go in there and you have a great time, but you also play a risky card on playing yourself. In my, You know, you always feel a little bit vulnerable. Yeah. And, but I refuse to play anything else. So I, I'll never forget when I went to, I was um, on with Michael Usher doing the latest when I first came to Sydney and one of the guests came, um, came up to me and I was in the dressing room talking to the ladies or whatever and um, she comes up to me, she goes, oh, you're so unique. <laughs> and I was like, no, nah, mate, I'm not unique. You just need, there's thousands of us. It's just, <laughs> just. Oh. Just drive out 25 minutes that way. Promise you, there's heaps of us. <laughs> so, there's a few I guess more, for right? me it's just trying to still, you know, work my hardest to not try and, you know, I still go to a bowl, other. I would have a drink and, you know, it's just a, just to continue to remind myself, it doesn't matter what people think of you, Jess, just who cares? And I think that's the key thing. I mean, just being authentic and being a full self-expression and just being you. And um, and you can't go wrong. So then you don't have to second guess and second think who you are because you know you are, you know. So yeah, just... but people give you advice. Like when you be yourself, people give you advice and be more like this and more like that. Okay. To be honest, it gives me the shits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, can I can imagine. I haven't, <laughs> haven't been given much advice yet. I, I have actually almost asked for a, for a bit of feedback at different times about how I do these things. Uh, but I've I've just chosen just to be me and just be exactly what I'd be in any other situation. So yeah, yeah. that's. But it doesn't matter if you're in media or in your mum's group or in a meeting at work. Playing yourself is the hardest role sometimes because you feel like you're not good enough. So you just yeah. try to, and, and so it's not just necessarily a media. You're exactly right. It's not a media thing. It's a just it's a human thing. Yes. No, I completely agree. So on technology, so do you believe in solar and batteries? I mean, are they worth having and would you have them on your on your future home? Yeah, bloody oath. Um, the end. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely. You talk to anybody that's installed a proper solar system, yeah. you don't get many negative responses, do you? And I and I think also there's something about selling something back to the grid. That has controlled us for so long is 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 a nice feeling, no matter how big or small. It's actually nice to know the shoes on the other foot and, and you've got yeah. that control. And yeah. um, and the battery storage, obviously, you know, is the, the buyback rates unfortunately are rubbish these days. So getting a battery is almost a better investment. Yes, it's a you know they're not still they're well okay priced, but they're still obviously you know there's some room to go to get them super affordable. But uh, certainly, yeah, uh, certainly great to get zero carbon. What? Other actions would you recommend people take to achieve zero carbon? Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 I haven't seen Hello. you for ages. It's been a few days. How are you? <laughs> okay, mummy, remember the deal? Mummy's working. Yeah. <laughs> okay, love ya. Sorry. That's okay. I don't know if you noticed. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice at all. <laughs> I've been doing it for like 10 minutes, just doing the push, oh. you know, the mum push. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I was interviewing um, Jimmy and Tam the other day, and Coco was in the background singing. Like, yeah, um, yeah. And I was just like, Coco. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Oh. Um, did you say what other technologies? Or technologies, or just small changes people can make to go zero carbon. I mean, what would you? What advice would you give other people, and what would you do yourself just to like get closer and closer to net zero or a zero yeah. carbon future? The windows blew me away. You know, having our our generic windows inside our homes. You know, eighty yeah. percent of our warmth is heat is lost through the window. Therefore, having to run your heater, and then in the summer. 
the heat that comes through it. I think we lose I, 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 something like 60% of our, our cooling system, which means that we need to continue it on. So yeah. um, the windows for me were a huge one only because it's just such an easy fix. Um, yeah. And... and 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 I would I couldn't imagine Australia in ten to fifteen years, you know, having anything but these windows need to be mandatory. So to me, that was just that just blew me away. Having your concrete floors where it's warm in the winter, cold in the summer, that'll be something that we'll be putting into our future builds. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you saw this in one of the, in the episode. There was the solar chimney, and. I just adored the solar chimney. So the solar chimney is this um, ancient technology from um, originating from the Middle East. And what it does is it creates your stairway where the cool the cool air from the, the ground, so they dig it in a little, comes up and it cools your house, but it also lets the, the heat the out of the top. That's and amazing. If, if anyone's at home, Google solar chimney. If you're about to renovate or rebuild a house, Okay. Oh, we all need help, darling. I promise you. Um, <laughs> welcome to the real world, Dal. We all need help. Okay, give me two seconds, baby. Take this. Please, please. And here we go, people. A lesson in mother mother management. By <laughs> so well, though. You did it so well. Thank you, babe. <laughs> Appreciate it. It's the eyes. <laughs> um, and, and so if I were anyone that's renovating or rebuilding, I really urge you to to look up the solar chimney, which is your stair, which is implicated in, implemented with your staircase. Um, awesome. To me, that was just and, and even a, a conversation starter, like you, you're drinking on the back deck or whatever, and you're talking about this Middle Eastern technology that's been around for thousands of years, that's natural, that, yeah, it's just, it's gorgeous. That's absolutely stunning. And you guys are looking to build, hopefully, well, as soon as possible, I guess, but you know, you know, you're looking like us. I suppose we are, uh, but maybe next year. Next year, we're hoping for a, um, we're hoping for a slight like decline in property prices. Yes, um, aren't we all? <laughs> which we've all been trying, but we'll be build, we'll be building in the next couple of years, and we'll awesome. be it will be using the renovate or rebuild techniques to do so. I have a I have a goal where I want to create um the first fully su like sufficient energy sufficient house in C i want to create the most energy efficient house in sydney that's my goal oh, wow. and that's so, well, we're, we're aiming to do the same thing in queensland so i'll uh i'll definitely be sharing some uh sh we'll, we'll share we'll share secrets between us oh definitely as... i'll be calling you all the time <laughs> absolutely and look i think i think there is a, there is a very real opportunity for everybody to participate now in reducing their carbon footprint it doesn't take a lot just small steps every single day, you know, we'll get there. So I yeah. think so. And it's all, I, I think also it's word of mouth. So if we do it, we have 10 friends that come over. People say, what can I do? Well, you can just do it. And then you'll Absolutely. have a couple of mates that will come over and they'll see how wonderful it is. Then they'll do it. And their friends will do it. It doesn't necessarily need to be this always needs to be a viral campaign or a billboard or something significant. It's just about you having a crack and other people seeing you have a crack, and then the ripple effect will follow, in my opinion. I certainly agree. Well, Jess, thank you so much for being on with us today. Um, you're an absolute superstar. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, thanks for having us, Rosh. Love you. Oh, you're very well. Love you too, mate. You're very welcome. So just jump on here. So, guys, before we finish up, remember that you can get three quotes. Oh, let me just shamelessly spruik again with this new banner. Um, you can get three free solar quotes and a free energy bill comparison via our website ngmatters.com.au. Make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a follow on our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn pages um, so you can find out more about us. For now, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day.